What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. Sometimes it gets to a point where an organization has to make the difficult decision to part ways and let go with their star player. More specifically, what I'm talking about is letting someone go that is consistently or somewhat consistently unavailable to play basketball games. Whether it's completely their fault, whether it's unfortunate circumstances, whatever the case may be, you can wait on it and wait on it and wait on it and say, eventually, things will be on the bright side for said player. But how much disappointment and how much time loss must you endure before you say, this is no longer worth it? What are we looking for? What's important to me? If it's winning a championship and this guy who's supposed to be a very important piece to winning a championship can't play or at least can't play in the moments where we need him the most postseason, for example, then what good is he? Our goals aren't aligning right now. If our goal is just to be relevant and sell tickets, have a player that puts butts in the seat, well, we're getting hosed on that too. Fans, some fans aren't going to show up for the games when the star player's out, unless you live in Los Angeles, New York, maybe Miami. But that's not happening in many other markets in the NBA. They don't have that luxury. So what is it? Kawhi Leonard, Zion Williamson, Joel Embiid. These are three guys, three basketball players, three star players, three players who look like one of the best players in the league when healthy, when healthy, when healthy. However, they can't keep their ass on the court and seem to often fade when you need them the most. When you think you finally got to the point, they made it, they're healthy, playoffs around the corner, song as old as time. History repeating itself. And like that, they're not able to play anymore. Vamanos. It is time for the Los Angeles Clippers to move off of Kawhi Leonard. I was one of the Kawhi Leonard people holding on for a long time. Because I know when he's healthy, he's a top five player. But how many years did I have to keep saying this? How many years do I have to say, this is going to be the year. He can't possibly have another down year where he's missing the playoffs or missing a long stretch of the season or missing uh, long stretches of the playoffs, whatever the case may be, eventually this is going to work out in his favor. I mean, what are the odds? Well, well, Kawhi Leonard has missed 179 of the possible 435 games since joining the Clippers in 2019 folks he also set out the entire 2021 2022 nba campaign with a torn acl the one year Kawhi leonard was healthy into the playoffs was the bubble and that might have been their best chance their best opportunity to win it all and they ended up blowing a 3-1 lead to the Denver Nuggets in the second round. Had they advanced past the Nuggets like they should have, 
they probably would have likely beat the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals based on the previous matchups and the regular season. Plus, that's the matchup we all wanted. Battle for LA, all that stuff. Kawhi, fresh off the championship in Toronto, etc., etc. Hmm. Fast forward. 2021 playoffs. Again, it was looking damn good for the Los Angeles Clippers. They were beating what I believe was the top-seeded uh, Utah Jazz in the Western Conference. If not one of the top seeds, forgive me. In the second round, I believe. And in the fourth quarter on a layup, drive, Kawhi Leonard just buckled up. Bye-bye. Out for the remainder of the playoffs. The Clippers still managed to finish that series led by Paul George and gave the eventual Western Conference champions, uh, Phoenix Suns, all they could handle in a tough-fought series in the Western Conference Finals. Now, had Kawhi Leonard been healthy, they would have likely made the finals and dispatched of the Phoenix Suns, and we would have seen what had happened between them and the Milwaukee Bucks. 2022 playoffs, of course. Kawhi Leonard was not there. They missed the playoffs. I think that was the year uh, PG-13, Paul George, ended up getting COVID during the play-in turning, and he couldn't play, and they ended up missing the playoffs. I do believe how that's went down. 2023 playoffs. 2023 playoffs. Kawhi Leonard played maybe just two games before tearing uh, his meniscus in his knee. 2024 playoffs. Yet again, knee injury. He still hasn't stepped foot on the floor this season and it's damn near 2025 folks from inflammation in his knee from last season it's about to be 2025 happy new year earlier this year the clippers signed Kawhi leonard to an extension 153 million over three years are you nuts are you nuts this has been going on far too long it is about to be 2025. This started in 2019. He's only getting older. And his knees aren't getting any better. They are not. Age and attrition. Time. Kawhi Leonard is fighting an uphill battle. Trust me, folks. I am a huge Kawhi Leonard fan. I love his game. But damn it. Last year... I had to be honest with myself and say, you know what? I can't do this no more. I can't keep picking these guys. Potential is always potential. But you can't keep showing me Kawhi Leonard results, Kawhi Leonard consistent injury history, and expect me to keep looking like a dodo saying to myself, this will be the year. This can't happen again. This will be the year. It can't happen again. No. It's not happening. It's just not. Even when you load manage him. You load manage him throughout the season. It's looking good. He's played 50-ish games because of the games he's missed for rest mostly. And you're going into the playoffs. Right around playoff time. Bye-bye. The knees check out. They don't want to do this anymore. Pattern of history, folks. Pattern of history. What do you want? What do you want, Clippers? You're not going to the finals. You're not winning a championship. His body can't sustain the rigors of this NBA. And he's not on the court consistently enough to put butts in the seats. So what? what is your end game here with Kawhi Leonard? Do you just feel like at this point... You've gone too far. You've dumped so much time and money into him that you're just praying that if we could just get one year yeah, of, of good results, then maybe we can say this was all worth it. Well, newsflash, it's not happening. It's not. It's not. I've been the most optimistic Kawhi Leonard and Clipper guy. It's not happening. It is time to let go of him. And I know what you fear. You say, well, damn, it made us to work out in Toronto. Yeah, it did manage to work out in Toronto. But I can also say if Kevin Durant was healthy, even with a healthy Kawhi Leonard in the finals, they weren't beating the Golden State Warriors. 
<laughs> that had more to do with Kevin Durant than anything. Just keep it real. But anyway, just do yourself a favor. Get rid of him. You might be worried that, oh, we're going to trade him and then watch. He's going to be healthy and he's going to uh, be so great for this other team and they're going to reap the benefits of Kawhi Leonard. You can't think that way. Get rid of him. Trust me. There is always a team willing to take on the contract. Because there's a lot of teams thinking how you're thinking. But you got to be smart. You've already dealt with the BS. Offload them. Get rid of them. Get some better pieces back. If you look at what Tyron Liu has been doing with the Los Angeles Clippers and not having his star players around often and getting the most out of these role players and mid-tier players, hats off to Ty Lue. Now, if you can get some good quality pieces for Kawhi and continue to have that great coaching on Ty Lue, you might actually have something. You'll have value for Kawhi Leonard, value that can actually play. So Clippers, say goodbye to Kawhi Leonard. Joel Embiid. <laughs> I'm not even going to get break down the Joel Embiid games, play numbers like I did Kawhi Leonard. Because Joel Embiid's stats are so staggering from this perspective. Joel Embiid was drafted in 2014. Joel Embiid has 10 years in the game. Joel Embiid has missed damn near 50% of the available games in his NBA career. 50%. 50%. 50%. Listen to what I'm saying. 50 That's nuts. That includes his first two seasons where he didn't play at all. Because of his foot, I believe. Folks, I will say this. Because Joel Embiid has been uh, somewhat available two of the last three seasons, and when he was playing, he was playing phenomenal, I would have maybe gave him a bit of a pass here because things were starting to look better from the years previous of the last three, not including so much last season because he only played, what, less than 40 games last season? But, you know, there might have been a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel with, with Embiid. But that mixed with the other shenanigans going around right now on the Philadelphia 76ers, him saying he'll never play back-to-back, -back. Tyrese Maxey bringing the dirt to the surface, so if you ever thought Joel Embiid was a leader, now you know he's not. And all other BS going around in that organization, revolving around Joel Embiid, not wanting to take accountability, playing the pity card, wants us to feel sorry for him. No. No, 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 no. So F it. I don't even think Joel Embiid wants to be in Philadelphia anymore. I don't think so over the last couple years now that i think about it all i've really heard from this guy is bitching and complaining oh, everybody hates me oh, it's always my fault oh why didn't i get the mvp why didn't i get the mvp oh i'm one of the best centers of all time bro really 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 and then if he is even available in the playoffs he plays like a much lesser version than himself than what we've seen in the regular season. So what, what what do you expect me to do with Joel Embiid moving forward? Huh? He's not a spry young chicken. His body's breaking down. He doesn't stay as healthy as he should. And when he is healthy, come playoff time, you'll be damned if you get Joel Embiid or you end up getting... Luke Longley, which one am I getting? Maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but you get what I mean. You get what I mean. It is time to let go of Joel Embiid. The process failed. I never trusted the process. A lot of people did. They trusted the process for 10 goddamn years or whenever that crap started. I don't remember what year that actually started, but we're just gonna call Joel Embiid the process 
<laughs> We've been trusting the process for 10 years. <laughs> the process ain't working out. The process ain't processing. You hear me? That's a dead process. Writing's on the wall. I think it's time to let go of Joel Embiid. Send them elsewhere. Rebuild around somebody that's worth rebuilding around. Somebody that can stay healthy. You got Tyrese Maxey. Do what you want with Paul George. If you want to get another young guy and keep Paul George as that kind of declining all-star at this point of his career, probably on the tail end of his prime, so be it. But offload Joel Embiid. He doesn't want to be there. He's always disgruntled. Well, go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. At this point, the 76er season is over. I don't give a damn how well Joel Embiid plays. And he hasn't been looking too good for the amount of games he's played. Their season is over, man. Nothing's good coming out of this. The losses will keep mounting up. The absence of Joel Embiid will remain. And I almost expect to continue to hear more things getting leaked out of the locker room, sources, etc., etc., uh, and uh, the saga to continue. So I think I think the 76ers should look to get rid of him before the trade deadline this season. I truly believe that. Somebody to take him. Somebody to take the contract. Somebody to take the risk. Let him take it. Get some value back. Start staring a different direction because this ain't it. This ain't it. Fifty percent of get fifty uh, percent of the games played in his career he's missed. No. No. I can't. I can't do it. Ain't happening. Get rid of Joel Embiid. Zion Williamson. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Again, like Kawhi Leonard, Zion is one of my favorite players. Zion Williamson has missed 207 regular season games in his career. His short five-year career thus far, 207 games of 346 available games. Folks, Zion Williamson has missed about 60%. 60% of the games in his career thus far. And you thought Joel Embiid's 50 was bad? Lord Jesus. 60. His first year, he played 24 games. He showed a little bit of promise next season with 61. Nothing to be proud about, but given the player, you can see why people got excited and had some positivity at a 61-game finish for Zion Williamson. It's understandable, right? But the major setback came next season when he reverted back to something similar to his rookie year, playing only 29 games this time. Now, last NBA season, Zion played... 70 games, but he flamed out when you needed him most. The injury bug showed its ugly head again like many of us suspected it would. It seems like it's only a matter of time with a player like Zion Williamson. And the thing about last season, the Pelicans were in the playing tournament. They were facing the Lakers. They were giving the Lakers all they could handle. Zion was unstoppable. 40 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists. Lakers could do nothing with him. Looking like the Pelicans might pull that game out. And right on cue. Right on cue. Zion injures himself. Final moments of the game. Final minutes of the game. Heads back to the locker room. Doesn't return. And that would be yet another dark cloud over the Pelicans organization. Now, some people might say, boo, boo, boo. It's only been five years. Give him some more time. Give him some more time. Don't pull the plug on Zion Williamson just yet. It's too early. He's too talented. He's too young. So much upside. Because you see, when he's healthy, the Pelicans look like one of the better uh, teams in the Western Conference. Over, you know, the last two or three years. They were hanging around that top four, top five seed. But it's always when he gets hurt, when the Pelicans drop in the standings. That is all true. And I love Zion. He's a throwback player. You know I love my throwback players. 
ain't out there shooting threes, all this other stupid stuff. He's telling people, get big. Get big. I'm going to dominate the paint. I'm going to play to my strengths. I'm going to take jumpers when they make sense. All that. Oh, I love it. But Lord Jesus, 60%? And it's always when with the Pelicans, when you finally think, man, we got the ball rolling. The team is looking good. We got young talent. We got reliable players. The Smoothie King Center is jumping. We made it to the playing tournament. Zion played 70 games. Woo, he's having a great game. We about to beat the Lakers in the plan. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Because it's Zion Williamson, folks. His body can't take the rigors of the current uh, climate of the NBA and with their regular seasons and tail. Get out of here. And then the other thing with Zion, why I don't have a problem pulling the plug on him just after five years. Injuries aside, which obviously play a major part is that the other part of it is can he stay in shape can he find a good body size that will uh, keep his knees and his feet healthy for the way he plays but still able to dominate and use his strength can he do that I don't know because I keep hearing he has issues with his diet and I've seen all the pictures and I've seen all the memes and I tell you what if you've ever been in New Orleans my family roots are from New Orleans I've been in New Orleans plenty of times I can tell you from first-hand experience you can quickly put on 20 pounds in a week and a half two weeks very quickly the food is absolutely amazing and it is hard to turn down now, I'm not making millions of dollars on an NBA contract. I would like to believe that I could control myself a bit better. And I have money to have, you know, uh, chefs, professionals, dietitians build something for me where I can still enjoy some of the things, but still keep the fat down and stay at a healthy weight for NBA play. That's the other part that doesn't make sense. But it seems like he can't control himself. So that's another thing. Is he going to do what it takes to take the best care of his body possible? And then the other thing is, I still haven't forgot when Zion was healthy. I don't remember if it was last season or the season before, but I remember he was healthy. And we were like, why is he on the floor playing? Why? And then they interviewed him. And he basically said, uh, I just, I'm healthy. You know, I just don't feel like Zion Williamson right now. So... Until I feel like Zion Williamson, then I won't be back on the floor. Oh, my God. I'm trying to be sensitive to mental health and all this stuff. But, Lord Jesus, man. Really? 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 You don't feel like Zion? If you don't get your ass on that basketball court, man, you already been missing most of your career. What are you doing? You don't feel like Zion Williamson? What does that feel like? Do you need to add on 20 more pounds of fat? Then you will feel like Zion Williamson? Somebody, please explain it to me. I take all that into consideration with Zion, and I just, I, I give up on him. I love him when he's playing great, but you know what? I can't, I can't, I can't. I, I just don't see it happening. I don't. I think Zion Williamson is going to be one of those what-if players. He ain't Kawhi Leonard. If Kawhi is, can literally play, he'll go out there and play. He just has the worst knees in the world, apparently. But now I got to worry about Zion not feeling like Zion, even when he is healthy. <laughs> and he got foot. And he got knee. And what other injuries Other injuries I might be missing? I don't know. I can't. I can't. Get rid of him. It is time to move on. Take the L. Take the L. You drafted. Hindsight's. Uh, 2020. But at the time, you did draft the right player. But listen, folks, get rid of them. Pelicans, time to move on. You're going to F around and lose other players that you think are valuable to the team, possibly, because they're tired of the Zion Williamson BS. You might F around and um, lose CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram because they have already voice their opinion on their 
uh, disdain and um, uh, how tired they've grown of Zion Williamson and, and these antics. It sucks. Especially when you got a young team that seems like they like playing together and know what their potential is if this guy can stay on the floor. It is time to move off Kawhi Leonard, Joel Embiid, Zion Williamson. And don't trade them to each other. Don't trade Kawhi to the Pelicans and Zion to the Clippers. Don't. Send them somewhere else. Let them be somebody else's problem. That's all I got to say about it. Scream off in the comment section. Let me know what you think about it. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified. And I catch you on the next one. We out, baby.